In the last video, we saw how to create a EC2 instance from the console inside AWS. In this video, we are going to see how to deploy a Spring Boot application into the EC2 instance which we created using a Ubuntu image. Press the bell icon on the YouTube app and never miss any update from Tech Primers. As you know, this is the AWS Management Console where we can navigate to different services. Right now, if you see, if I go to the EC2 instance, in the previous video, we terminated a EC2 instance. And if you now go to this particular instance, you can't see that instance because the terminated instance will be now hard pushed from our UI. Now we can create a new EC2 instance and get it started. Meanwhile, I'll just show you what uh, application we will be deploying. So this is a small Spring Boot application. It doesn't do any fancy stuff. It just has H2 database as a dependency and it uses Spring JPA to add some users into the database. So this is the schema for the users. The users table has ID, which is an auto generated value. It has name, team name and salary. And I have a controller here, the rest controller, which is having three different endpoints. One is called all under users. One is called uh, slash name. You can provide a name and you can get the value of that particular uh, user, the users of that particular user detail of that particular user. And finally, we have a post mapping with which we load the data. Basically, it will create a user uh, when we provide a JSON with the user schema. Ideally, it should have been named as user. Uh, I don't know that time I had created as user. So I'm just reusing this project, which I had uh, created initially for some other video. I'm just reusing this project. Uh, what I had done is I had just created a created this project, opened this project, and I did a Maven build. So if you see here, I just did the Maven build now, and it has created a file. So it has created a jar file here. If you see here, it has created the jar file, and this is the jar file we will be running in the AWS instance in order to bring the Spring Boot application up. So we are going to push this jar into the EC2 instance. Let's see how we can do that. So before going into uh, the EC2 creation, we can go to S3. So S3 is like a, a storage space where we can store some stuff. So I'll be storing the uh, file inside the S3 storage. So you can create a bucket. I already had created a bucket called uh, Tech Primers. You just need to click on the create option and then it just asks for uh, basic information. I just said non-public for now for this particular folder and I already had a, a jar if you see here what I'll do is I'll just delete this Where is the option to delete I can do a delete here Right, I'll just delete this object because I just uh, tried um, Previously by uploading it to the s3 object store and I try downloading it, it from the s3 on my ec2 instance so that is how I tried previously. Now I'll just upload it again so that we can see. I'll just click on the upload option. Um, we can just copy this uh, jar directly. So I have uh, the Spring Boot demo project and the target is where I have the jar file. I'll just, uh, right, I don't need this. I just maximize this. Let's say next. Once I click on the next option, it just asks me to uh, provide access to the file which we uploaded. So I'm not going to add any access. Right now what I'll do is I'm just going to concentrate on uh, deploying my application onto the EC2 instance. So I'll just give public access. Right now I'll just say uh, give it a public access, grant public read access to this object. So that way we will be able to download this object directly from the EC2 instance without giving any key. Or credentials so we will see that in a later video so let me do the next option and then we can upload this if you click on the upload option it will just start uploading the um, um, jar file which we created so if you see here it's just getting uploaded um, so meanwhile what we can do is we can create a, a ec2 instance what I'll do is I'll just fast forward this video so you can see me create it but I'll just uh, fast forward this video so that it is faster and we can get it quickly One thing about the images, 
we are going to use the uh, Ubuntu image but if you are using Amazon image by default it provides Java uh, Ruby Perl PHP MySQL PostgreSQL all these are included by default and also the AWS SDK so all these are included in the uh, Amazon Linux but I'm going to use the uh, Ubuntu Linux and show you how we can download Java uh, into that particular machine because we need the Java runtime right to run the Spring Boot application so that is why we need to install Java right now it doesn't have Java Ubuntu just is a plain Linux version so I'm going to use that Meanwhile, the S3 object store has uploaded our jar file, which we just pushed. So we have the jar file already in the S3 object store. We can now access this from the EC2 instance by just downloading. So if you use this particular URL, even you can download it. Uh, if you are trying this program, what you can do is you can reuse it. So I'll uh, I'll leave this link, right? You can, uh, you can use this link to download it directly and then try it out. So you can directly download this file onto your s3 instance and then you can just bring up the application and see whether you are able to do it or not so meanwhile our uh, ec2 instance is running if you see here it is showing as running and let's try connecting to this instance from the local i already have the certificate uh, downloaded based on yesterday's video i'm just reusing the same certificate in the same data center so let's go through the terminal client so I have the certificate already here. I just have the certificate here. So I'm just going to connect to the EC2 instance using the SSH command. So I'll say S. So this is a new EC2 instance, but with the same certificate, we can connect to the instance. So we are now into the uh, machine. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to say clear. Now that we are logged into the EC2 instance, we need to download the Java version because by default I won't be having Java. If I do a Java hyphen version, this doesn't have Java and you can see that the sudo command says please use the default Java version or any other Java version which is present here. So we can use any of these but uh, what I'll do is I'll use the Java default JRE version. But since this is the first time we have uh, logged into the Linux machine, what I will do is I'll update the uh, package manager. So I'll just say apt so this will just update the package manager with the latest version of Ubuntu and the respective softwares which it requires so I'm just uh, doing that I'm not doing anything else and now what we can do is we can directly download the J default JRE version which was mentioned so we can do a sudo so in order to be clear I'll just do a clear we should do sudo apt get install and we need the default JRE version this will automatically download the default JRE version which is coming from the Ubuntu image which is customized for the Ubuntu Linux machine. So we'll be directly doing a Y and this should be installing Java in our machine. So if you see here all the packages are getting downloaded and this should be installing Java into our machine in, in the next few minutes. Installation is completed. Let's try and see if the Java version command works now. Yep. So the Java version which has got installed is OpenJDK and the version of Java is 1.8, 151 patch. So this is the version which got installed currently and that is the default JRE version which is provided for the Ubuntu Linux, right? You can see that this is the version which is built for the Ubuntu VM. So that is what uh, has been installed and we are in the Ubuntu VM which is a 64-bit server. So now what we have to do is we have to download the JAR version which we uploaded to the S3, right? So what we can do is we can copy this link. You can also use the same link. You can also same, use the same command. So I'll just expose it as public until that particular VM or until I delete that file later on. I don't know when I'll delete, but still you can use that. I'll do a wget. Wget is like pulling a file from a URL. So you can do a wget and then I'll just give the URL and then I just say, put it in the same folder. So this should download the file and you can see that it got downloaded already. And you can see the file under my home slash Ubuntu. You can store this file anywhere. You can write custom scripts to bring this particular uh, JVM up. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to use the Java basic command Java hyphen jar and I'm not going to do anything fancy. So let's 
So I'm just going to use Java hyphen jar and the name of the jar. So this is going to bring up the Spring Boot application automatically, right? Because it has the embedded Tomcat. This is going to bring up the web server under the port 8080 because we have not overridden the port. Uh, so it should be by default 8080. So let's wait for the Spring Boot application to come up and let's see what happens. And notice that this is already inside the Amazon infrastructure. This is not running anywhere outside. We are inside the EC2 instance and we are starting the Spring Boot application now. The JVM is up finally in 19 seconds and it is by default uh, hosted in the port 8080. Now, how do we access this particular web service? We can go to the EC2 instance and we can get that name of the server. So if you see here, the name of the server is here and we can connect to this particular URL with the port 8080 with which we just started the server. Now when I hit it should show some error page. Yep, this is the error page which comes from Spring Boot and you can see the Spring Boot logo. Let's go to the code and let's see what are the different uh, REST endpoints we added, right? So we added uh, users, we just added one called users and then there is a all which will query the data from the database and show us. Let's try that now first. Uh, because there is nothing right it's a in-memory database so there should be nothing i just hit the user slash all and this is returning me an empty response see that there is an empty response and if i pass peter then also i should uh, not have any data it's empty now i need to load some data in order to load it i need to do a post mapping so i already have the postman here i just open postman here i'll do a post i'll just select post and now I need to get the URL, right? So I have the URL. I'll just paste the URL here. It is going to be HTTPS slash and the port number is colon 8080 slash users. So that is where we will be loading the data, right? So that is the uh, path which is mentioned here. So it is under users and nothing under that. So we can directly load the users here. And what are the fields which are there inside the user schema? It is name, team name and salary. ID will be automatically generated so I'll not provide that so let's go to the body and I'll just enter the raw and I'll mention it as JSON type so that we can type a JSON here uh, the first one is name so I'll add the name as uh, Peter the next one is team name let's say Peter is from the development team and his salary is of type integer so let's take it as 12,000 now this request needs to be sent to the ec2 instance the ec2 url you can also try accessing this url uh, if at all if it is up i i think mostly i will just stop it so that i can save some um, money for the rest of the year because whenever you are running an instance you have to pay for every hour so you will be charged on a hourly basis so i'll just keep it stopped when i am not using it so I'll just stop it later on. So don't try uh, this particular URL. So I'll do a send now. Once I do a send, this request will be going to the Spring Boot application. But uh, unfortunately, if you see, it says uh, nothing is there. Hold on. Okay, this is uh, HTTP. I think I have only HTTP in my. Uh, yeah, it is a HTTP instance. It's not HTTPS. So I'll just remove the HTTPS. And let me trigger. Yeah. So the response is with the ID generated. So what we did is we just queried the database again for that particular user and then we provided the response back. So this basically confirms that my data got inserted. However, let's do that from the browser and confirm if Peter's information is getting displayed. See, I already have the user slash Peter here. I'll just refresh it. Now Peter's information should come. Yep, yeah, I got it here. So this is specific to the user so if i do a all this should provide all the users which are currently there so right now only peter is there let's try adding sam and sam is from the operations and his salary let's say is ten thousand i'll just hit it again now if i go to the url again and refresh it this should return me sam's data as well so this is coming from the ec2 instance and this is from the instance which is there here see here there are some logs here there are some error because i think uh, we provided some wrong http um, instance we just provided a https but it was http so that was this error stack 
and you can see that before hitting find all we have a hitting find all right so yeah this is some log which we have added in the user controller so that is what is getting printed so this is from the ec2 instance and we are querying the ec2 instance and this is a small spring boot application similar way you can deploy your application as well to the ec2 instance note that the space which is there in the instance is temporary so if you have something here in this machine and if you terminate this particular ec2 instance these files are gone now and you will have to copy it again from s3 bucket so s3 is the place where you can store all the files and then you can get it downloaded to any of the ec2 instance so if i create a new ec2 instance i can do that there as well i can just download it there and then just spawn the uh, spring boot application right so i'll just summarize what we did um, what we did as a part of this video is we went into the s3 console the aws console and created a s3 bucket and we uploaded the jar which we already created which is a spring boot application which has some basic functionality of uh, adding and delete adding and retrieving users from the h2 database inside that spring boot application we just uploaded that jar to the s3 object store inside amazon we just did it from this ui and we went to ec2 and we created a ec2 instance for us we connected to the ec2 instance from the terminal here and we downloaded that jar which we uploaded to the s3 using the wget we downloaded it meanwhile we installed the J uh, java version inside this particular linux image so inside the ec2 instance we installed java and we downloaded the jar file and then we did a java jar with that particular jar file and the spring boot application came up once it came up what we did was we used a postman to add some data so we just added using the post once we added it we were able to retrieve it using the user slash all and re it retrieved the user information here so this is how you can deploy a spring boot application into aws i hope you guys understood uh, how we can do that if you have any queries do let me know in the comment section below and if you want me to make any video on any specific topic do let me know in the comment section below if you like the video go ahead and like it if you haven't subscribed to the channel go ahead and subscribe to it meet you again in the next video thank you very much